yeah, baby. We are having fun today. Welcome to Bish's RV. My name is Josh the RV Nerd. We're hanging out in Coldwater, Michigan today with a personal guilty pleasure favorite, the Ember 191 MSL. The Missile! This thing right here is a, it's proof that unicorns maybe do exist because there is literally nothing else like it out there. So what this thing is, um, is a, uh, an RV where they said, what if the bunks could go away? What if the bunks could be something else? What if you want to convert it to cargo space? What if you want to convert it into an office? What if you don't want two beds, you just want one? What if you need room for dog kennels or, or anything like that? And they came up with one RV that could do literally any and all of those things all at the same time with zero actual modifications the RV with a modular sleeping system uh, back in the bunk area. Now they've also created basically this crazy door side cargo loading space that uh, comes with its own screen. So if you want to sit here and hook up a hammock and literally just flex on the neighbors, you have the ability to do that. Now some other really cool updates on this one. Uh, they're now using a new air conditioner, the Truma Aventa Air. And if you know about air conditioners, you know that is an awesome one. I can't wait to tell you more about that. They finally got the uh the quick drop stabilizer jacks with the superior stability on these that they originally had prototyped the the factory supplies are there to take care of that and a couple other handy little updates i'm very glad to show you other updates include they have now bumped up their factory standard solar package to 200 watts um and remember every single uh ember comes with some level of inverter so if you do want to use this as an office all of the outlets back there in that bunk cargo flex space they are all live powered whether it's off the battery or plugged in tethered to the parks we're all also looking at one with max solar today there's some serious updates on that and as always i can't wait to see what you think about this it does have a couple hiccups i discovered something in road mode that might be a potential major point of concern for some folks but i will show you the good with the bad with everything in between and if you appreciate that kind of stuff make sure you hit that subscribe button and in the meantime let's get going because baby we got a lot to cover you're also going to get to meet today's special guest steve the stovetop now we've already taken like a quick overview look at this thing and what I like to call our floor plan in a flash. But what I want to do here is actually just give you kind of a quick, here's your bearings uh, flyby and get you right back to that convertible bunk space. Cause I think that's really like the business end of this RV. Now um, you're looking at this and saying with the dinette where it's at and where the sofa where it's at, the TV's in a terrible spot. And I don't necessarily disagree with that. What I'm going to ask you to do is just kind of hang on a minute and we're going to uh, explain a little bit more and how it doesn't have to be that way. It just happens to be that way by uh, consumer choice. The RV that we're actually in is a, uh, a, a personal like order from a customer. They've said, this is how I want my Ember made. So this was their preference, but it doesn't have to be that way. That's kind of the whole point of this RV is that you've got that totally convertible sort of bunk system over here Right now, we've just got it in wide open pure cargo mode. And one of the reasons I wanted to do that is to show you that there's all sorts of outlets and lighting and everything all around here. I'm going to spin you around like a record baby a little bit slowly to get to the other side. You see there's more outlets over here and every household outlet you see in this RV is inverter wired. So if you are on battery power exclusively, you can power any and all of these outlets. Now the USB outlets are almost always 12 volt. I've never seen an RV in which they're not 12 volt unless they're pigtailed off of like a, uh, a power strip or one of those power tower kind of things. So we've got it in wide open cargo mode right now. But like I said, if you want to, you can make this an office easy peasy. Or you could bring in one of those nicely fully finished and shockingly lightweight little platforms right there, close up all your cargo doors, have plenty of legroom, which is something a lot of people don't think about when they think about making a desk in an RV. Uh, plenty of room for power cords. I mean, you could easily snake power cords uh, up here in that little uh, gap. You could have, you know, your big window open for viewing. You'd do it a little bit, anything you want. Heck, you could throw a shelf up here for your other office stuff. You know, maybe something like that. Or you can adjust these and put them in bunk mode. And in case you're wondering, they literally just like, they went out and got like bags of water softener salt and just packed bags of rock salt basically onto these and they, they couldn't get them to fail. Now, interestingly, in the prototype version, they said, you know, we've got some E-Track on the walls over here for mounting stuff, but we're probably not going to keep that. And a lot of people said, I don't know. I kind of like that. Why don't you keep it? And they said, I don't know. Maybe we will. <laughs> Now, uh, take a look over here. You can see how this is all uh, carpetless and everything's got kind of like a warm tone. 
And that's one of the things that I think is very interesting on these Ember RVs is how they have, um, you know, they sort of cross the line and they merge the concepts of like, uh, you know, an upscale but small camper with an adventure camper. They're sort of borrowing pieces and parts of both. And this is one of those other new updates I am excited to talk about. The Truma Aventa Air Conditioner. Now, the thing is, I can talk about it while we look at other stuff that's maybe more interesting to look at. It, but that, that air conditioner right there, that's something that we have some experience with off the, the Winnebago Flex units that we have here at Bish's RV. Um, that unit right there is very low power draw. On the Max Solar package, it can uh, you know be cranked up. You can run that just off battery power, which I think is uh, very cool. The uh, other thing with that is it has a, um, uh, a night mode so that it you know isn't quite so loud. It's not roaring like Katy Perry for you. The other thing is it also has a dehumidifier mode, which is different from just um, active compressor cooling mode. And what dehumidifier mode will do is, as the name implies, dehumidify the RV, which is super beneficial regardless, but it's not actually kicking on the compressor. So it's pulling very little power, but it basically, it, it seriously cools the RV to a surprising degree without actively kicking on the compressor. So when you are off grid, it's a huge, huge benefit. Now, um, the uh, let's talk about the furniture arrangement because you're looking at this and yeah, the TV is in kind of a weird spot. By default, that's not a dinette. We're actually looking at the optional dinette that's available on these. Again, this is a customer requested unit. The standard on this is a, uh, a sofa, actually, with some storage behind it. Uh, but, you know, you, you can get it, obviously, with the dinette like you're seeing here. When it's a sofa, which is standard, the TV makes a lot more sense over in that location. This, by the way, is a 12-volt uh, a, a uh, television and, like, sound bar all kind of built in one. So, you know, you're not dealing with, uh, you know, having all kinds of speakers running through the RV in all kinds of different crazy places. <laughs> Notice that we have that full shade in the entry door over there. That's something that Ember's done, I feel, uh, right from day one. Then between it, we have a remote control that's new. That is actually to operate the uh, air conditioner. That is both the remote control and effectively the thermostat. So wherever you are holding or setting that remote control is where the RV is cooling to. So if you keep that with you, it will work to keep you comfortable in whatever position you happen to be in. Now up front here, we have ourselves a little Murphy sofa situation. Um, where do I want to start? I tell you what, since the Euro windows are back for 23, baby, let's actually start up top here. One of the questions people have on these sometimes is where's the shade? It's got a day and a night shade, and you can actually kind of split the difference how you want them set one versus the other. The day shade really acting almost like the bug screen for the RV. Now, that is a 60 by 80 true queen bed, and I'm not normally a fan of bendy beds, but this is about the easiest one I've ever seen to operate. This is one that if I was going to, to make the sacrifice to go to a bendy bed, which is not my personal preference, I feel like I could make this one work, especially when it's true queen. But here's the thing. Because this RV's bed can uh, be put down when the slide is closed, and I will show that to you in a few minutes here, uh, you could swap that out. If you just ignored the sofa down here, you could swap it out for any true queen bed of your choice. Now, something else that's really important is what you're not seeing, and that's below the sofa. And the trick is, you really still can't see very much of it in a Max Solar RV. With a Max Solar RV, your whole charging system, your batteries, everything is actually located under here, uh, under the right-hand uh, side of the uh, sofa as we're facing it. My brain just kind of paused and melted for a minute there. Um, when it's a standard Ember, the non-Max Solar variety, that will just be a big, deep storage tub. Um, a couple other neat little uh, uh, things here. You've got household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed. You see the little amber glow lighting down there? There's one switch that can activate sort of like nighttime navigation lighting through the entire RV. Now, over here, that switch, and there's actually a dimmer on it, will control the, uh, the lighting that you're seeing shining through above the bed right there. There's actually an indirect light uh, above the bed. I guess when you're laying on the bed, it is a direct light. Never mind. Um, and these things down here that you're seeing in the RV, that uh, those are your heat vents, basically. This has the Truma Combi. It's a combination water heater and furnace. It's a very efficient, small unit. It's not a cheap unit, though. But that's kind of the thing with Ember. Um, everything that makes them great is also their greatest liability. They have all these cool features. But as a result, they are a fairly expensive series of campers as far as single axles go. 
Um, again, kind of, you know, if you want that different kind of construction, you want that sort of, uh, you know, all those upscale features, unfortunately, they do cost money. Um, over here, we are looking at a 12-volt DC compressor fridge, which even with the standard solar, you should be able to generally offset, assuming some decent uh, sunshine and sun capacity. Giving you a look at the kitchen here, they do not offer any sort of oven in these. Last I knew, they were sourcing uh, somebody to find them uh, a, a convection microwave oven option. I won't be surprised if that ends up happening through the 23 season. And I promised you a special guest. Did you see... The face of our special guest down here, Steve the Stovetop. I love that guy. Always in a great mood. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, crap! <laughs> the bathroom! <laughs> crap the bathroom. <laughs> Ah, uh, classic. Anyway, moving our way back here. The bathroom door does lock, by the way, which is awful nice. Porcelain foot flush stool that is super fluffy friendly. Their bathrooms are very, very nice. For a narrow body camper, I think they've got some of the nicest, uh, spacious bathrooms out there. Notice it's just an easy step-in shower. Now, the back of the RV is six and a half foot tall which means that my head does have to be in that skylight to stand in that shower. And by the way, this does have that handy little um, water saver shower miser system right here. Basically what you'll do if you're boondock dry camping, you don't worry about this so much when you're park camping, but if you flip this little lever, the water will recirculate back into your fresh holding tank. And when that blue turns white, like one of those old hyper color shirts, then you know the water is a nice hot shower temperature. So it's six and a half foot tall in the back. But if you notice, the ceiling actually gets taller the further forward you go in the RV. You see how the lines don't quite match up along that roof line up there. Nothing's wrong with that. Everything is level and square. The roof just gets slowly taller. So it's actually bigger here in the living room. XL vent fan, uh, standard on these. No, uh, you know, four inch dollar store fart fan. That window does tilt open for airflow, which is one of the really cool things about those Euro windows. They give you so much more airflow, and they are a dual pane, so they do a fantastic job of knocking down so much of the heat if the sun is just barreling in on this thing. All right, now, a couple interesting things here for travel and road mode. Remember, depending on how you want to use this, like, you could leave the bunks maybe locked in the upper position or just leave this whole space wide open for loading like I've done here. Um, and as you notice... Uh, from that rear cargo door, if you wanted to, you could actually slide something like probably maybe just a one-seater kayak, but you could slide something long all the way up here if that's what works for you. Now, interestingly, I seem to recall last year, I was able to easily open the bathroom door when the slide was closed. This year, they've added um, some extra ceiling and things down here around the slides that's kind of making that a little bit of a hiccup. So I think maybe because they've made some um ceiling improvements you might need to kind of leave that door open and potentially like you know put a little door stop down or something like that to keep it from sliding around in transit i don't know that'll be one of those things you might have to kind of try on in person and see how that fits you now you don't necessarily with this type of dinette need to put the table down for transit it's just habit i still like to do that it just feels more secure for me but this right here i think is one of the big wins that you have on these embers you can Put the bed down in transit. And frankly, I think I would just in case you hit a big pothole just to make sure that handle doesn't pop open. It's just one less thing that you have to necessarily worry about. It makes a little more sense to me, feels a little bit more secure. I'm gonna whip around the backside here and give you a look at this thing. Uh, again, just from the other direction in full on cargo mode here as we uh, put everything back in place and take a look outside. And the craziness kind of starts right on the outside of these, right when we get going. First of all, let's just talk some body stature stuff. This is seven and a half foot wide, so it is a narrow body, but it's not super narrow, which allows them to pull off some of that cool stuff on the floor plan on the inside. But the, uh, the whole structure of this is different from almost anything else that you find out there. So like the, the walls, let's just start with the side walls because that's an easy place to start. They're laminated, they're aluminum framed, they're block foam, uh, you know, packed and insulated, but they are woodless. They actually uh, use Asdell on the inside and outside layers of the walls. So everything is basically composite, aluminum, block foam, etc. God forbid you have a leak. There's really nothing in the walls that can frankly possibly rot out on this RV. So now that you know that, basically the front wall, the rear wall, even the roof are effectively exactly the same, except the roof is a three inch thick version of that sidewall. 
Now when you look at this, your whole corner seams are different. Instead of uh, conventional sealants that just kind of age out, dry out, rot out over time, they use um, a, uh, a slide seam tape effectively, like an Eternabond tape below a powder coated aluminum exoskeleton to help keep everything lashed together. There's basically very little in the way of seal and maintenance points uh, on this RV. And the floor? Well, that's another horse of a different color. Because the floor is also an all composite kind of thing. It uses a different type of material from the sidewalls, but uh, basically, Long story short, it has uh, greater screw retention even as compared to plywood. It is heavy duty kind of stuff. Your slide floor actually is made out of the same stuff. Notice how your black and your gray tank uh, poles are you know, enclosed, protected up where it's heated. All embers are zero to 100 degree tested and proven in the Truma uh, you know, uh, temperature chambers. Tire pressure monitoring is standard. The module just, you have to plug it in when it gets here but we can do that for you obviously it's this is fresh off the apple cart mary battery disconnect and a smaller pass-through that is one of the only kind of points of criticism that i really have on this one um there's you know in terms of some people might say yeah but i want a north south bed like i get that but in points of execution on this rv as they were going for its goals i think it's pretty uh stellar and fantastic so you saw that it was side camera prepped it's also rear camera ready and this has turn signal safety lighting so those side marker lights the extra clearance lights you see at the top of the rv in the front and the back they all blink along with your turn signals for safety now we're looking at one today with max solar that means that up front here in the gearbox, which is also powder coated aluminum, you just have open cargo space. The traditional version of the non-max solar would have, uh, that's where your batteries would be located. You see that the batteries are all on the inside of this one. They use a very different kind of power front jack situation here. Basically, it's like a power corner jack that you see on a lot of RVs. They're just using it on the tongue. And you might notice the whole hitch on this looks different. They call it their Versa coupler. Long story short, this is designed to be able to be exchanged out in case you wanted an articulating like lock and roll hitch or something like that. Those are things that you can do here. Notice our uh, 40 pounds of propane always protected off the side. Oh, there's been a couple people, by the way, who have said, I can't believe this compartment doesn't lock. The manufacturers cannot lock a propane compartment for safety reasons. You have to be able to get there and quickly shut that off. Now, if you look up on top of the gearbox, you might see some of my footprints. Uh, that's because the gearbox is intended to be walkable, essentially. And the idea behind that is if you had extra cargo stuff you wanted to load, if you um, wanted to put a portable generator mount on top of that, it's made to be able to handle that kind of demand, which I think is very, very cool. Um, Moving over here, you got the little drawbridge style drop down door. You can always unclip that and fully flip it down like you saw on the other side. Max Solar, our, our control equipment is all located over here, which is a little bit interesting. Um, but there's, I, I don't know that there's necessarily a lot of room in the master control center to kind of put that all together. Now, this is something that I am very excited is finally making landfall, and it's happening on a lot of brands. The, uh, the new quick drop stabilizers here, because basically what these have is a like a strong arm stabilizer bar built right onto them and what that allows you to do is get superior stability at your campsite which is uh something that not uh, a lot of single axles necessarily really offer now you saw the underbelly is enclosed um there's also radiant barrier down there uh 12 volt tank heaters on every single holding tank standard on all of these embers which is very cool and this always kind of throws people. Inevitably, somebody watches one of these videos and goes, is the awning mounted crooked? And it's not. The awning is level. The roof slows upward, or slows, whatever, slopes. I don't know. Apparently, I'm a little slows today. But the roof slopes, there we go, upward so that you get water runoff because it's a flat laminated roof. So they put a pitch on it. Now, this over here is, I think, a big, big deal. Goodyear uh, Wrangler tires, 87 mile an hour rated, American sourced, but stabilizing a single axle camper at a, a campsite is kind of hard. The new quick drop stabilizers will help. This will do more. Basically, a built, a built, what is wrong with me today? Built on wheel chock, there we go. Um, that will allow you to really lock that tire down to keep it from uh, moving, and you could always padlock it for security purposes while the RV is being stored. But again, the name of the game on this one is functionality and flexibility. Because that's kind of the idea behind this RV. It only 
does everything. <laughs> <laughs> now, it might do some of it in a janky kind of way, but it only does everything. So, as opposed to the 191 MDB, yeah, you know me, which is a more traditional bunkhouse that has a dedicated camp kitchen. This one just has this big open cargo loading patio space. You want to load some big e-bikes or, I don't know, like... I'm not sure what you couldn't really load in here. There's so much of it going on. Now you might be noticing we're looking at a screen. It, um, they went with a Velcro screen right here. So that if you wanna make sure you can really seal all the way around it and keep the bugs out, you can do that. Now, if you are looking for a little outdoor grill and situation, the good news is it is still equipped with the handy dandy propane cooker hooker right there. Now, um, the uh, rear ladder that we're looking at, that is optional. A lot of brands have jumped on this train, I think. I'm going to give Ember some credit. They were one of the very first ones to do it. But taking a peek up top there on top of that ladder, you get to see uh, the new expanded 600-watt Max Solar as opposed to 570. Basically, their uh, solar supplier last year offered 190-watt panels and has since bumped things up to 200. So uh, you've got a base solar package on these now of 200 watts. Max Solar is 600, still with that 3,000 watt charger inverter system. Um, that will all be changing over, actually, I believe, to Victron components in the very near future. Max Solar always comes with two Battleborn batteries. Um, no, pardon me, those are changing over to, um, I believe, uh, Dragonfly Game Changers or something like that, but bigger batteries standard on these, even more capacity than last year. Just, you know, the same options, you're just getting more for it. And have you noticed? The Euro windows are back, baby. Um, the uh, last year, Ember ran into a little bit of a uh, supply shortage on these, uh, you know, dual pane Euro windows right there. But you can see for 2023, they are back. They are standard. They are not currently looking at or expecting any sort of shortage issues on those at this time. Um, the good news is you still have an option if you prefer the dual pane frameless. That's always an option that is available on these. Now, um, the RV is actually nose up a little bit right now, so the tail is artificially down a little bit. But uh, what I'm getting at here is you have a single sewer outlet, and it already has good clearance, but it's actually even a little bit better than uh, what it might look like right here. But overall, I... I'm just, I'm, I love the look of these. Like, uh, I think some people might look at this and say, yeah, well, it's mostly a repeat of what you did last year. You gotta remember, Ember's only like a year old. They're still kind of getting everything finished up, fleshed out, and uh, they've got a lot of new, cool, exciting things coming, folks. Uh, stay tuned to this channel. We're gonna have some fun things for you this year. And in case you were curious, the headroom under that overhead uh, kind of almost almost like a large camp kitchen door, but the headroom under that with my six foot plus frame, I can fit under that thing just fine. It is, this is an easy, comfortable camping kind of camper <laughs> here. I would love to know what you think about it. Now, a lot of people have said, man, if only they would build something like that on their, their, their quad wheel, their, their four wheel independent suspension version of this. Well, uh, at the time of this filming, what if I told you that might be just around the corner? Stay tuned. I've got some other really good things coming to the channel here for you. So once again, if you appreciate how we show you good with the bad, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And as always, I will leave you some links in the video description to check for pricing and availability. I might also see if I can dig up a couple similar floor plans for some other brands. Maybe you don't care about the modular system. Maybe you don't need all the off-road extremeness of this one. Well, I've got a couple more conventional offerings you can take a look at too. When you're ready, we're ready. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.